When someone thinks of the worst in animation, a true rock bottom, to quote Buster Moon from the acclaimed Sing franchise, one will generally think of the Emoji Movie or Shark Tale, or those who are knowledgeable of animated Hollywood box office disasters might even think of the Playmobil Movie or the Nut Job 2. Every single movie on this list has two things in common. They are widely abhorred by audiences and critics alike. And they're not the B-movie. While the B-movie is an intensely controversial film among media today, is almost never considered the worst. Is that because it is so unabashedly plain that there is no reason that it could be considered the worst? Or perhaps, dear viewer, is it because it is so incredibly ridiculous that a viewer cannot help but stare in awe and wonder at the train wreck unfolding in front of their eyes? It's awful, but they cannot help but applaud the oddity that is the B film. However, I cannot help but wonder deep down in my soul about the meaning of the film. On paper, the film is complete chaos, but at a closer glance, there's something tightly wrapped together. To quote George Lucas, the film is poetry. It rhymes. There are two pieces of this film that I find to be more poignant than this film should ever have been. One is encapsulated by the legal portion in itself. There's almost a paradox that arises about ethics and rights. As it turns out, obviously it was not ethical, nor was it legal for farmers to steal honey from bees. Barry B. Benson sued the Honey Corporation directly and won. But at the loss of honey and pollination, flowers stopped blooming around the world. This begs the question then. Was it ethical for the bees to want their honey back? On the surface level, yes. If bees are sentient beings with the ability to communicate, then yes, they deserve every last drop of their honey. Yet even though suing the humans was ethical, it was still not right for the world. There's an intense paradox here that questions the difference between something being ethical and something being the right thing to do. Ethics in itself is the question of whether something is morally just, which should, in theory, go hand in hand with something being right. But this movie does not let this be true. Rather, it takes ethics and it takes rightness and it splits them apart and completely separates those two words into complete and total ambiguity. In the end of the film, the bees only partially get what they want with bee-approved honey. In the end, bees still have to work to produce honey for human beings. It almost answers the question of our ethics and rightness the same thing, and it says no. Sometimes you may be doing what is ethical, but according to the bee movie, what is right is more important. The second piece that makes this film so profound is its extended metaphor for the harmony of nature and humanity. It is all explained through Barry and his human love interest, Vanessa, who represents the people who work to build a symbiotic relationship with nature. Vanessa helps Barry, who helps Vanessa. Ken, of course, represents corporations who fear the result of nature on their money-making schemes. Rather, to explain to Barry that he has an allergy to bees and that he kindly requests that Barry would not sting him, Ken immediately resorts to violence, as businesses do. They hinder the results of activists like Vanessa represents, which is shown through Vanessa's relationship to Ken. Ken has Vanessa by a string. Unless Vanessa lets him go, nature and humanity cannot have a true relationship. This idea is proven by Vanessa's breakup happening before the actual trial. To finally finalize Vanessa's relationship with Barry, Ken, the corporation, had to be let go. 
To further the metaphor, Barry and Vanessa's relationship starts to strain once nature is taking away from humanity. The problem is not necessarily the loss of honey, but the loss of pollination. Barry took the honey back, which is his. He deserved to have his honey, but the problem truly arose when Barry started taking away from humanity more than humanity took from Barry. Once the flowers started to die, Vanessa and Barry started to drift apart, making this metaphor even more powerful. Finally, when Barry started to give back to Vanessa, the activist humanity figure, the harmony came back. There has to be balance, or there will never be a true human nature relationship, as Jerry Seinfeld, a writer of the B-movie, proves in his screenplay. In the introduction of this film, it sums it up perfectly. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway because bees don't care what human thinks is impossible. I leave you with this one thought. Perhaps this was not, in fact, a statement on bees, but rather the film itself. It should not be able to fly. It should be impossible. The movie is bloated. Its premise is ridiculous. Yet, when I look up and focus, I see a fat little bee with Jerry Seinfeld's voice saying, Nothing is impossible.